In today's video, I'm going to show you how to avoid the dreaded dog ear. That's what happens when you pull the edges of the corner too tight. And I'll show you some tips on how to avoid that. Now, this is one tiny part of my favorite finish, the fold forward finish. And I'll put links below in the description for you to visit. There's a public page if you are not a member, but if you are a member, what you wanna do is head on over to your dashboard, go to the basics course, go under finishes and find the fold forward method. In that place, you will find the PDF that you can download. Now that PDF is available to the public, but it's for sale. You can get it free if you're a member of the rug cooking journey. And you can learn more about that at the link below in the video. Let's get started. It's time to finish basting down this corner. Now what I want to avoid at all costs is what I call a dog ear. And a dog ear on your whipping is when you have your hooking here and then your backing comes up and does this. We want to avoid that at all costs. Okay, so the process is just as it's outlined in um, the PDF or inside the rug cooking journey in the videos. Yeah, go to the basics course and look for the fold forward finish. You'll find all the information you need there about how I do this zigzagging and get it prepared. But I don't cut the corners off until I'm to this point. I've got that edge basted and I need to round that corner. Now is when I cut it off. And I cut it off on the line, which means that I will not be cutting any of the zigzagging or the straight stitch because that was done inside the line. And then I lay that corner down and I get that corner attached so it stays in place. Okay, next what I do is I come over to this other side and I fold the next corner down. And with a little bit of manipulation, you can get these inner edges to sort of meet. That's all I'm worried about right now. I'm not worried about this. And what I want touching is just the cut threads. I don't want the zigzagging to touch. I just want the cut edge. And it's the same way when I fold it forward. I want the cut edge of the fabric to touch the loops, not the, I'm not trying to get the zigzagging up there and close. This one just happens to be zigzagged nicely right on the edge. And see how I use nice big stitches? And I do the same thing until I come up here to this one. I'll do the same thing. Let's do it again. I'll cut right on the edge because I know that's where the perfect 45 degree is. And then I'm going to baste it down. That one might be overcut a little bit. That one's overcut a little bit. Good. So I'll give you a lesson on what to do when it's overcut like this because that's an issue. But let's end it right there for now. I just work on the edges, these folded edges here, and folding more forward until I can get it where the cut edges of the rug warp are just beginning to touch. I do not want to overfold it. I'm going to attach my thread really quick. There we go, nice and tight. And then just over fold the, or fold those and then stitch them down to the piece on the back. And you can do some sideways stitches like what I'm doing here, although I find it difficult 
to get into the zigzagging. It's just easier, I think, many times just to take a stitch into the backing that's below. You don't want to stitch in the threads because that's not going to hold anything. Make sure you stitch um, where there's actually some fabric to hold it. Once I have that, I'm ready for the second fold. And that second fold is to fold this little bit down so that it just barely touches the, um, the loops. And then I'll grab a thread from here and some meat from there and stitch it down with a good stitch. That's all I need, just the one. And then I'm going to take it over here to this other side and go up. I cut mainly threads. I got to go back a little bit further. Okay. Now that I've got that, I can start folding up the edges. So I'm going to start on this edge and I'm going to like crease the little bundle with my fingernail to encourage it to fold right where I want it. And I want that fold to come right down to where it needs to be. You can take the needle like this to push that back or use your fingernail, whatever it takes just to get that fabric to fold properly. And when I'm doing the stitches on this side, I like to come up in the bundle and then go down um, perpendicular to the backing and go down right next to the loops. And that gives it a good anchor point. Once we've got that side down, um, is that perfect? Because the end is not stitched down yet. But I can start doing the second side. And I put my um, needle in there to help sort of fold it and get it to come down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab just a thread or so from this side and just a thread or so from this side because that's about all my hands can take. And I'm going to pull that in towards each other. You've got to do it twice in order to make it work. And I'm going to pull that in, but I'm not going to over pull it. So I'm just going to pull it in so they're just barely touching. And then maybe do one more stitch up here. And again, don't pull it in super tight. I do just barely enough. And what I, the reason I like these stitches is when you're whipping, your yarn will not fall in that hole. So I like it from that point of view. And then once I get that taken care of, I want to get to the back again and come up in the bundle and then go down. And then crease it, go down, come up in the bundle. Crease it, down, and up in the bundle. Pretty simple sewing at this point. The biggest thing is, is just making sure that you crease it and get that extra layer of fabric back where it needs to go so that you end up with an edge that is very consistent. Okay. Now when we whip it, what we'll have to do is just be very careful that when we do the stitches that are right here on the shoulders of the corner, we don't want to pull those super tight. We want to keep those a little bit loose so that it doesn't pull that fabric in because that is what creates the dreaded dog ear. And that's what we're trying to avoid. For more tips like this, join me at cindygayrowcooking.com. If you're looking for my online courses or the membership, The Rug Cooking Journey, then just click on the online classes icon right there at the top. Then you can join in on the fun 
and learn more about Real Cooking every single day. Now, if you can't wait until 4 p.m. today, because for members, there's an event every day at 4 o'clock, then check out the videos right here. Did you check them out? Oh, come on.